Hey gang, I've got a video that I'm really excited to share with you today. It is how to start a business using ChatGPT. AI can really be the best co-pilot that an entrepreneur can ask for. And this is critical because the way we work is changing dramatically because of the introduction of ChatGPT and AI. But the good news is, is that you can use that very technology to help guide you to really your ideal business. And this is a step-by-step -step process for how to get that done. This is basically how you're gonna steer the AI to help you create the business of your dreams. These are the steps I follow in this order. I have started several businesses and I can tell you, I really wish I had this technology back when I was starting uh, some of those. It would have really saved me a lot of time and effort. Uh, there's a lot here. I have a checklist version of all of this on my Patreon. This has all of the prompts and everything that we're going to go through in a checklist fashion. You don't need this, but it's there. Uh, you can get everything from the video. Um, but check that out if you want a, uh, a, a print kind of PDF version of this. I'm going to be using terms throughout this video, AI, chat GPT, large language model, LLM to mean loosely the same thing. I know there are differences there, um, but I think, you know, primarily a lot of folks are using chat GPT now, but whatever the new next uh, most powerful AI is would be, uh, you know, synonymous and could be used in this same way. So. Let's dive right in. I think the first step is to really make sure that you are set up for success by understanding a little bit about your motivations and what all your options are out there. You can see some questions here. Socrates, know thyself. And also the best way of having a good idea is to make sure you have a lot of ideas. Creativity is connecting things. So you might have an idea for your business already, but going through this step of, of making sure that you're considering all your options uh, can be very helpful. And before you even get to that, you wanna use ChatGPT to create a self-assessment questionnaire to evaluate your own skills and work preferences. Work with ChatGPT to understand what truly motivates you, what makes you happy. Maybe it's working with people, maybe it's working solo, maybe it's building things. Understanding that can really help make sure that you're set in uh, the right direction. Once you've gone through that, you wanna run your business ideas through a set of divergent thinking exercises in order to think more broadly about the business. So what I mean by that is uh, asking the chat GPT to generate various creative prompts that can list various connections and look at unrelated concepts in different industries and combine them up in different ways that you might not have thought of in order to potentially think of something that might disrupt your industry uh, in a bigger and better way. So again, you wanna take all of your ideas and hopefully at this stage you have multiple ideas or different variations of ideas and validate them through the large language model, run them through ChatGPT, looking at potential pros and cons and challenges and uh, you know how you're gonna vet these ideas in various ways. Take inspiration from other very different industries. So ask ChatGPT to provide examples of successful businesses from unrelated industries and maybe how they can be uh, applied to your industry and to your ideas. And these are ways of really helping, uh, using ChatGPT to help you think outside of the box and get a bunch of different unique options on the table before you decide uh, what direction you're gonna go. Here's a meta prompt, this is a prompt of that creates prompts um, that I have found very helpful. Uh, anything you put in here generates very different ideas. So I'm just gonna read this one out loud. What are 10 effective prompts for entrepreneurs with your skills? So you put your unique skills in there and a desire to put in your motivations uh, that can be used to help them brainstorm business ideas using large language models. So. Uh, that's a little bit wordy, I know, um, to read it out loud, but if you insert your skills in there and your motivations in there, this is gonna generate a bunch of prompts for you that you can then feed back into ChatGPT that will really help you think outside of the box and analyze what all your different options might be. 
Here's a few uh, resources for this step that I have found incredibly valuable. Ray Dalio, a fantastic thinker. Uh, he's got a website called principlesu.com where you can do a personality test, personality assessment. I've done a ton of different personality assessments. This really cuts through a lot of the noise and gets you the, the most impactful uh, parts of, uh, of a personality ins assessment. So I highly recommend that. I'm pretty sure it's free. Uh, he also has a short book out, The Principles, Your Guided Journal. And there's some exercises in the first few chapters of that that have really helped me understand my motivations much better. So I recommend that and pretty much everything Ray Dalio does. Uh, there are some mind mapping tools out there, XMind and MindMeister. Those can be helpful at this step to kind of map out uh, your different connection points. Before you get into the next step, understanding your customer needs. So once you've kind of vetted your, your business idea and got a feel for it, you want to get under the hood and really understand who is interested in buying your service or your product in a very deep way. Um, and really asking ChatGPT to uh, understand the customer motivations and pain points. Generating a list of those can be mind blowing. You know, I'd been operating a business for almost 10 years, selling to a specific type of customer. I put this in there and I was blown away uh, by the pain points and the motivations that I had been missing all along. So don't skip this step. Once you have that list, ask how best to address those different issues. You can use that in designing your product and service and you can for sure use that in your marketing. So you can also use these large language models like ChatGPT to analyze online reviews and look at the different feedback that customers have been giving on Amazon, Yelp, and other places. And you might want to use it to specifically analyze and look at the two and three star reviews. So the folks that were kind of medium, they might be giving helpful feedback about you know other products and other services that are similar to yours that can help you um, you know, generate better, uh, a better product or a better service and also then help in your marketing as well. One of the fantastic things that ChatGPT can do is generate Python scripts and code. So here is a piece of code. Don't be intimidated by this because the walls between coders and uh, regular mere mortals like me are crumbling. I have a video about uh, how to get started with Google Collabs. It's my Google Collab quick start. And uh, it is the quickest and easiest way for anyone to really become, to create some advanced code just by copying and pasting. So asking, ChatGPT to create codes like this that analyze Google Trends, copying and pasting that into a Google Collab notebook and running that uh, can really give you some amazing superpowers when it comes to understanding your customers and all areas of your business. Um, prompt ideas for understanding your customer needs. Uh, here's one. Can you provide examples of innovative X businesses um, so businesses in your industry that have successfully identified and catered to unique customer needs and what lessons I can learn from their experiences. So looking at case studies of how have other people in your industry tackled their, this problem of understanding their customer. Here's another one. What are the key demographic and psychographic factors that influence customer preferences and decision making within X industry? So again, understanding not only you know, who they are, where they are, but how they think, the psychographic factors can be really helpful uh, for you to understand your customer needs. Here's a few more. I'm not gonna read these. Uh, you can take a screenshot of those if you like. Uh, but these have been helpful for me as well. Just insert your industry, your business, get creative on how you customize these. Uh, and you can then do some deep customer research. Now we're diving into step three here, understanding your competition. And this is a delicate balance. You've got to understand them, but you've got to be careful not to copy them directly. Uh, because you, what you really want to be thinking about is ways you can disrupt what's going on. Just the world doesn't want more of the same is a Rick Rubin quote that I came across recently. Uh, so if you're just doing exactly what someone else is doing, there's probably a better way. Disruption, I think, is pretty critical uh, in this age. So 
using the LLMs, using ChatGPT or whatever AI you, you might uh, be, be using at, to create a framework for analyzing your competitors. So simply asking it about their unique selling propositions, what are their pricing strategies, and then again, doing a SWOT analysis on these different uh, competitors. If you've got a ton of competitors in your space, you maybe wanna look at some of the big top dogs and then maybe some that are more in the startup zone or closer to your direct competitors. Get a feel for what's going on uh, at both of those levels. So understanding your competition again here, um, looking for just innovative approaches or unique ideas, brainstorming, going back and forth with the AI about how you might be able to stand out and disrupt the market. You've got to understand what's going on there in order to disrupt it, but you don't want to just blindly copy what everybody else is doing. I can tell you it won't work. Another thing you can do here is create more Python scripts again. Um, this is one for analyzing social media. You can analyze Twitter. Uh, and other different social medias of your, your competitors and for the first time really get under the hood of what's going on and create some customized software for your specific use case. Here's a couple helpful prompts. Can you recommend strategies for monitoring competitor activities such as new project announcements, marketing initiatives, or partnerships? How can I stay up to date with the competitive landscape? You might want to insert some uh, terms about your very specific industry into all of these. Uh, another one here, can you provide examples of X industry businesses that have been, that have successfully differentiated themselves from the competition and, and achieved success? What lessons can I learn from their experience? This is really helpful stuff. How have other folks disrupted it? How can you follow along, not copying those trends, but think of the next uh, disruption phase? Here's again, some more prompts. I'm not going to read all of these. You can pause the video, take a screen grab, uh, but these have been pretty helpful to me as well. Continuing on with some resources, uh, similar web, SEM Rush, Ahrefs, I use almost on a daily basis, can really help you gather information about web traffic, backlinks, paid, paid search, you know, PPC, all the different digital marketing um, things. If you don't know much about these, you can, you can use uh, YouTube or the AI to kind of help understand a little more about these tools and what all the data uh, that they, they can deliver to you can bring. Now, uh, once you understand kind of what's going on with the competitive landscape, you have some ideas about how to potentially disrupt it. You want to start thinking about building a brand and uh, a marketing strategy. It's really all about storytelling. I've got some great quotes here from Seth Godin. Marketing is no longer about the stuff that you make, but it's about the stories that you tell. Steve Jobs, pretty similar quote. The most powerful person in the world is the storyteller. The storyteller sets the vision, values, and agenda of an entire generation that is to come. And the AI is great at <laughs> generating stories or at least helping generate those. So starting with your brand strategy, using it to help develop your USP, your unique selling proposition. What's unique about you? What are you bringing to the world? Ask it to create a step-by-step -step process uh, for your unique situation of how you're gonna build this USP. From there, you can work with it to pick a name, have it recommend different combinations of words and phrases. Uh, this is just fantastic to kind of brainstorm with the, the AI on how best to name your business. And then once you have those foundational elements in place, you wanna develop the brand identity a little bit better. Logo design, color palette, typography, visual elements. I just went through this. I may do a whole video on this, but it can be very helpful picking out different fonts, which fonts go together, which colors go together. You know, if you're not a graphic designer, it can be very easy to <laughs> make mistakes here, but you can ask, you know, chat GBT, like for me, purple, you know, was, was a color I wanted to go with and what are good shades of it? What other colors complement it, etc. Uh, from there, getting into messaging, helping uh, develop your tone and voice, going back and forth with the AI about what might resonate best in your marketplace. And then, you know, what are the best marketing channels? You know, what are most appropriate? What are the competitors doing? You also want to think about what are the least crowded channels? This is a Tim Ferriss idea that I love, just thinking about what are the least 
crowded marketing channels because they are all so packed. And this is why disruption is so important because just spinning up some Google ads or a few different social media posts is not going to, it's not going to help you build the business in the long run or it will help you, but it, it's, you're going to need a lot more than that, I should say. So uh, thinking about the marketing channels that you want to approach first, strategically thinking about how you might have a strategic advantage given your plan to disrupt your specific industry. Here's a few prompts around that. How can I develop strategic partnerships or collaborations with complementary businesses or influencers in the X industry, in your industry, to expand your reach and credibility? Partners can make all the difference. If folks are already talking to people that can buy from you and you can help that partner in some way, do it. That can really be the fast track there. Um, there's some design tools here. Canva I've begun using a lot. Adobe, obviously. Figma, fantastic stuff there. So now we're moving on to the money. Money talk. We're getting into the, the real deal, uh, uh, figuring out uh, what this is all going to cost. So I love this quote from Dave Ramsey. A budget is telling your money where to go instead of wondering where it went. Um, cost identification, work with the LLM, the large language model such as ChatGPT to provide a comprehensive list of, of uh, potential costs, including one-time costs and what are the recurring costs going to be. Then work with it to help prioritize those. What do you absolutely have to do? How can you cut out certain things? Um, this is critical. So financial projections working through what a break-even analysis might look like for your specific business and looking for cost-saving strategies. So how can you figure out you know, ways to, to keep your overhead low? Um, can be very, very helpful with all of this. You, know, you can think of it as an expert in all these different areas. Um, prompt ideas, can you provide a template or examples of startup cost analysis specifically tailored to X business and help me to estimate my expenses accurately? Another one here, pretty helpful, how much working capital will be needed to cover operational expenses such as employee salaries, rent, utilities for the first six to 12 months of the business. Maybe you're a solopreneur and you're not looking at employees and rent, but you're gonna have other costs. So work through those, this may, cause you to reevaluate the whole plan and go back to step one. It's important to listen to, um, you know, what these things say. You know, I uh, obviously you want to take it all with a grain of salt. They can definitely be wrong from time to time. But, uh, you know, I was tempted to disagree with it about thinking, you know, certain business ideas would be a lot easier than they are. And I had to just do a gut check and say, maybe this is going to be harder than I thought. Maybe it's going to be more expensive. Maybe it's going to take longer. If you find the AI telling you those things, those are probably good things to pay attention to. Uh, a couple good books here, Business Model Generation and Financial Intelligence for Entrepreneurs. Uh, so check those out. Let's see. Now we're getting into how you're going to pay for this. Maybe you've got some funds. That's great. Maybe you're planning on bootstrapping. Um, maybe you've got other uh, ideas here. So the first thing is just comparing funding options. This is a mistake I've seen a lot of entrepreneurs make. They just have it in their head that they're going to bootstrap or they have it in their head that they're going to get a bank loan or they have it in their head that they're going to raise, you know, venture capital. Maybe this is just what their friends have done. This has just been in their head. But I think the first step here is figuring out what are all the different options? Maybe crowdfunding is an option you haven't thought about. Um, you know, thinking through the dif different potential risks and returns associated with different funding options, including dilution of ownership, debt burden, you know, it's great. Oh, great. I, I you know, raised a million dollars or I raised a couple million dollars, but what does that mean in the long run? How much more am I going to have to generate in the long run to, uh, you know, have the life and business that I want? So thinking through what are the best potential funding options uh, and, you know, then deciding on how to how to approach those. So if you're going to go raise venture capital, use it to help you create a pitch deck. Um, you're going to need a problem and solution section, a business model and monetization section, attraction and milestones section and a financial projections section. Um, then 
you know, if you're raising um, capital, help, help work with it uh, to help you brainstorm a list of potential investors, brainstorm networking ideas, where can you go meet these folks, and how, once you have a meeting, how do you tailor your pitch directly to that particular investor? And maybe ChatGBD doesn't know exactly who that person is. Well, you can feed it information about that person and then begin to role play with ChatGPT on how that meeting might go. Once you get further down the funnel, you can work with it on how to negotiate your term sheet and you know closing uh, tactics as well. So can be very helpful for crowdfunding if that's the direction you want to go, how to create your pitch, your rewards, incentives, and how to develop your promo materials. Uh, and if you're going for a loan, you know, there are certain types of businesses that will require a business plan. Don't automatically assume that you need a business plan uh, because I think a lot of folks can sp spin their wheels and waste a lot of time creating a business plan. If, uh, you know, a formal business plan, if, if they don't need it for financing. Um, but if you do need it for financing, you know, here are the steps that you want to work through there. Uh, prompt ideas for financing. So can you provide a comprehensive outline or structure for a pitch deck that covers all the essential elements required to effectively communicate my business idea to potential investors or partners? That could be pretty valuable. Um, another one, what are the most suitable funding options for a X type of business considering factors like startup costs, growth potential, and industry risk? So really asking these clear questions to the AI can help get you some pretty good answers. Uh, here's some resources for crowdfunding, Seeders, Crowdfunder, Patreon, Seed Invest, um, the Crowdfunding Handbook. Uh, if you're looking to raise capital, there is the National Capital, National Venture Capital Association. So those are a couple places to check out when you are looking to raise money. Now we're getting into everybody's favorite, the back office structure and licensing and bookkeeping. You can see this guy going crazy here. This is for most entrepreneurs, not the fun part, but uh, something that you need to think through. Uh, so using it to compare legal structures, you know, what do you want to do a sole uh, proprietorship, a partnership, limited liability, just thinking through all that stuff, thinking through all the different licensing and registration that you're going to need to do, figuring out how the accounting is going to work. Are you going to, does it make sense to hire an accountant, uh, hire a bookkeeper, do it yourself? What type of accounting software should you use? These are all great questions to work through. Um, I wish I had this resource, uh, this AI chat GPT resource. When I was starting my first business, it would have saved me a ton of time. Um, figuring out how to organize your chart of accounts. This is, you know, how you label all your different expenses. You know, it's different for every business. You got to figure that out. Figuring out your routine. You know, am I going to do this on a monthly basis, a quarterly basis, a daily basis? You know, working with it. How are you going to track your costs? What works for you? tax compliance, asking it potential deductions or credits. Brilliant. You know, just thinking through how can I save uh, on my taxes? Use ChatGPT for that. Here's some prompt ideas. What are the steps to register a new X type of business in X locations? What licenses, paperwork, uh, etc., need to be completed before beginning operations? And uh, this is another good one. What factors should I consider when determining whether to use a cash or accrual accounting method for my new business in X industry? I wish I would have had that. It took me years to kind of figure all that stuff out. Here's some great resources. QuickBooks, obviously Zero is a great one. That's, that's what I currently use. FreshBooks, Soho Books can help with that stuff. Now we're getting into hiring. We're getting close to the end here. Uh, putting your ideas into um, into the into the world, and you may again be a solopreneur, but you want to think about this because you're going to need to. You know, he'll probably hire somebody, be it maybe a virtual assistant or some sort of a contractor. So thinking through this stuff at an early stage can really help. Uh, you know, your culture is how your company makes decisions when you're not there. I love that quote from Ben Horowitz. So how you hire and how you onboard is, is the beginning of that culture. And it's very hard to change down the road. So thinking about it early on is, uh, is recommended. 
So, you know, working with the AI to figure out how can I be uh, an attractive employer brand and how can I identify unique recruitment channels, just like marketing. This is the same as your marketing strategy. What are the what are the least crowded channels to finding these individuals that everybody's trying to find out there? Um, the AI can be helpful with writing effective job descriptions. So figuring out how you describe you know, this person. I find describing uh, you know, the negative aspects of the job can save a lot of time because if people are looking through that and saying, well, you know, here are the negatives and they still want to talk to you, they're still interested, that can save a lot of time with um, you know, the interview process, not wasting your time on folks who uh, aren't prepared for some of the negative, you know, the hardest parts of certain jobs. Um, also working with the AI on how to leverage professional networks and social media. Uh, this is a whole world that you can explore about how to set up your social media in a way to attract great candidates and you know how to help with networking, where to go, where do these people hang out, what should I say, those types of things. Very helpful to use ChatGPT for that. Um, using it for onboarding. So this is the next step here, kind of figuring out your onboarding plan and a process for new employees or contractors. Which do you want? You know, making that decision first off is, is pretty uh, critical. Um, and then the culture for me, culture just comes down to open communication. So, you know, I, I've worked with ChatGPT on a lot of levels to help think through different hard conversations and you know how I would want to approach those with uh, my employees or my vendors, different things like that. Um, it can really help you get your mind right when you're having these communications and, and figuring out ways to build an open culture. Prompt ideas. How can I foster a positive work environment and company culture that attracts and retains top talent? including strategies for employee engagement, communication, and professional development. Every organization is very different. Uh, so thinking through you know, truly what your, uh, what your team likes and dislikes is, is a lot better than trying to force them to do some you know, group activities that might have a negative impact. Um, so here's some other prompts here to check out and grab a, a screenshot of those. They've been helpful for me. Now it's time to launch your baby business. Get it out there into the world. And I love this quote by Seth Godin. Uh, he talks about making something remarkable. This is something that's worth talking about, worth noticing, exceptional, new, and interesting. So everybody wants word of mouth. Word of mouth is the number one type of marketing, as I'm sure you know. The way you do that is by creating something that's worth talking about. So being real with yourself, is your idea worth talking about, worth spreading? If not, maybe you wanna fine tune it a little bit. So here's some things you can work with through, just some final steps before you launch, thinking of ways to disrupt your industry. Think about ways to build buzz and anticipation. Think about using the chat GPT or other large language models to help leverage your social media, influencer marketing, PR outreach, um, how to create a memorable launch event, you know, having a back and forth with it about, you know, where you're, who you'd want to be there, how you want to promote that, how can you make it something buzzworthy. Um, and again, st leveraging strategic partnerships during launch uh, can be very critical to, to getting the word out about what you're doing. Final tweaks, you know, once you've got the plan, load up your entire plan into ChatGPT and ask it for ways to make it more disruptive, um, more uh, remarkable. How can you make it uh, really something that folks want to talk about? Here's uh, one last meta prompt here. This is again, uh, I call a meta prompt a prompt for generating prompts. Uh, so what are 10 effective prompts that entrepreneurs can ask large language models to help them brainstorm innovative and out-of-the-box strategies for launching their new X business, focusing on X niche, given your budget, your location, and other constraints. So this is kind of a final last uh, step before you really dive in and start kicking things off. Seth Godin's book, Purple Cow, talks more about this. Andrew Chen's book, really cool, about the cold start problem can help here. And there you go. You're off to the races. Good luck. 
Again, we've got the PDF cheat sheet of all of this uh, on Patreon. I've got all of everything we've looked at here, including even more of the prompts there, just a couple bucks. Helps me keep the lights on here. Those Google Collabs we've got in there as well. Those, those are the code snippets that I showed you. Tons, of, a growing library of those are on the way to into the Patreon group. And I do some one-on-one -on -one coaching in there as well or consulting, brainstorming. So check that out. And I hope this has been helpful. I hope you have a uh, successful launch and enjoy that journey figuring out what you want to do and figuring out all these steps can be quite enjoyable now that you have chat gpt as your co-pilot thanks for watching <laughs>